moderator to begin this evening. Thank you for that, Kara, and thank you for all of your hard work in putting this evening's Coach's Corner conversation together. I am Monica McNutt. I am a graduate of Georgetown University, class of 2011. I did play women's basketball, which is the common thread that brings us all here. Um, I'm currently in sports media. I'm a host analyst for MSG Networks, ACC Network, uh, ESPN, Fox Sports 1. Listen, the hustle doesn't stop. <laughs> Coach G, who was on staff when I was there, knows that I was one who was very busy, and that has not changed. I'm super excited to have the opportunity to moderate. Um, tonight, we're going to have a lovely discussion, take a little bit of a look uh, behind us. We will watch a video in loving memory of the great Coach John Thompson Jr. Um, we will hear from Coach Howard about the present and the future. We will hear from our co-presidents of the support club, Nock Dwayne Bassey and Crystal Ridgeway will join us. Um, and then, of course, we will open up the floor for some questions from you, our devoted fans and supporters, our fellow alums, Hoya Saxa, indeed. So as we're going through the night, if anything pops into your mind and you want to make sure that that question gets answered, feel free to drop it in the chat. I will take inventory of the chat. We will present those questions to Coach Howard. And hopefully, this is a wonderful conversation that gives us all a little bit of energy about what is to come, despite all of the things that we are dealing with in our society. Having said that, I hope you are comfortable and not too many people are screaming in the background or animals barking at your respective homes. Um, let's go ahead and kick our evening off and we will check out the video in honor of Coach John Thompson Jr. Coach Thompson's legacy is, is enormous. Everyone that has played for him, has he has touched. I can emphatically say that he was the single most influential person in my life. Coach Thompson was a teacher, a hero, a mentor, and a father figure for so many of us. Uh, he pretty much saw something in me. I didn't see him, see him myself at the time. So for me, gave me the confidence to come to Georgetown and also, you know, make myself to a pro. He gave me advice, he gave me tough, tough love. Every single day, every time I saw him, he had words for me. He took the time to recruit me and give me the opportunity, not just in basketball terms, but in education terms. And I was able to get my degree and change my family's life. I never thought about going to college, but he convinced me that it was an option for me. I learned many, many things from him. But what sticks out most of all as a legacy to me in my personal life is hard work and sacrifice. Nobody owes you anything and nobody's gonna give you anything. In life, if you want something, you have to go after it. He's got myself and hundreds of other Georgetown basketball alumni, athletes who graduated from the school and became productive black men in society. And that's leaving a legacy. A legacy of excellence, a legacy of service, uh, a legacy of making a difference in the lives of others. Most importantly, uh, a legacy of standing up for what you believe in. Um, he's, he's always done that, um, you know, especially for our community. He's done a lot for us, so um, just stand up what you believe in and um, be willing to sacrifice, and he's done that. God, I love that man, and, you know, I would not be here, I would not be who I am today. I would not have had the college career and the professional career if I did not have that man pushing me. You know, I look on him as a father, as a not just a, as a role model or a coach. He is someone in, that I believe that has helped to shape me into the person that I am or I became today. He created an environment where we could be successful and the legacy he's left for me is that it's carried over for me for 40 years. Big John's teachings will last forever. And I thank God for the impact that he's had in my life. Coach, may you rest in peace in heaven. We miss you. And your legacy will live on us forever.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming on this evening uh, for the Coach's Corner. Coach Thompson was my why. He was my reason why I started playing the game of basketball. I grew up in Washington, D.C. And Georgetown basketball was the only game on during that time back in the 70s and 80s. Channel 5, black and white TV broadcast from McDonough Gymnasium. As a kid, I couldn't wait to run in the house just to watch that game, to see a coach from Washington, D.C., who was African-American at that time on the sideline coaching. It inspired me to want to play for him one day. And the story goes, we played in Urban Coalition. In Urban Coalition, we had the high school division. For those who know DC sports history, there was a young man by the name of Michael Jackson that played for Georgetown. We played Michael Jackson in, in that game. Big coach came and sat up top in the stands at Dunbar High School. In that game, after the game, he asked my coach, who's that guy right there? Needless to say, Michael Jackson signed with Georgetown. But just to know he asked about who's that guy right there, it continued to inspire me. Being from the city and knowing coach was from the city, it gave me an opportunity through Lee Reed and Ms. Sharon Brumell and President DeJoya to have the opportunity to live out my dream. But that dream wouldn't have been anything without Big Coach. He inspired so many of us to be better. We had an opportunity as a staff before Big Coach turned with his health. He came down to our wing in our offices and he stayed down there for almost an hour just looking around and talking and just giving us advice on which way to go and just saying, hey, you're doing great things. Keep it up. Don't let anybody change your direction. Not knowing that would be the last conversation that we would have with Big Coach. But after the passing of Big Coach, I called Pat and I said to Coach Ewan, I said, Coach, wouldn't it be great if we both could build something so great that Big Coach would look down and be proud of us? He said, absolutely. So when I come to you today, I come to you with heavy heart, but I come to you also with joy, happiness, and thankfulness for all the people who have given me that opportunity to continue on and try to build something here on this hilltop that Big Coach left. So that's my memories of Big Coach and the things that really have touched me. And we're gonna miss them. We're gonna miss them. All, all the history, the knowledge, and the fight for what he stood for. We're gonna miss him. It's a little bit of, it's a couple of things here I wanna also touch on, you know, how we handle some of the stuff that's been going on in the country our racial injustice moments. And uh, we as a team, we took 14 days and we separated ourselves from it all. It was pause for a cause. We put away the basketballs. We talked no X's and O's. We just took time to come together as a team in a program to just learn about culture and learn about each other and it was the most impactful 14 days 
I've ever been around a group of young women and a staff and learning about them, but learning about our culture and learning about each other. So at this time, I want to share a video. I thought I would jump in here, recap, and try to get with y'all. I'm not just involved because my wife asked me to spit some bars about them learning days while my people get turned away. I hope you can return to fave. Leave here and don't return the same. I'm sure there's people back in your circles and in your hoods that could use these facts and take them back to finally do some good. I applaud your efforts. Y'all been digging in for three weeks, having them hard conversations for change and not just free meek. Cause nowadays it's getting reckless, but the power of perspectives can unequivocally make us disagree and is used like a weapon. And this is not a suggestion. Trust me, I got the proof. But we learn from each other, different sides of the truth. It's hard to love someone you don't know. It's the first thing you would say. But we can have them conversations at the table, blue and gray, white and black, real convo. And what did y'all do today? I heard you learned about them bias, what it could do to the brain. No need to lecture you. I'm sure the films from the festival more than suffice. What's more important in life is the lesson you learn. You're going in the wrong direction. It's a chance that you turn. It's not the love that you give. It's the trust that you earn. Thought I would jump in here, recap, and try to get with y'all. I'm not just involved because my wife asked me to spit some bars. Even your work on the floor still calls for applause. But that only happens when you cause for a cause. Now. Yes, Let's go. Let's as you saw there, um, it was very powerful. The experience um, in having guest speakers, we had the chaplain and team motivator um, from the LA Lakers that gave us a great conversation piece for building team. We had our alum come back and share their journey and their experience and the things that they are doing now, which was very powerful. This is the things that we talk about when we move forward. Moving forward with people that have had history that was on the hilltop as players, as students. But as we move forward, we have to also think about what that 14 days was about. It was about coming together. And our time of pause for a cause is not over. We will continue to let our voices be heard. We will continue to stand up for what's right. We still will be that team. We will exercise our vote. We will shut it down on November 3rd for voting. If we're away from home, and we have our absentee vote uh, ballots already in. They would have been already mailed back. But if we can't vote here, we will assist. If it's passing out water, if it's passing out snacks, it's something to get everyone involved. We don't want to sit on the sidelines for this one. We want to continue. Continue what our young women have fought so hard for. They put out a powerful video for the 4th of July, what we stood for. We as a staff are very, very proud of these young women because it takes a lot to stand up for something that you believe in and have your voices be heard. We appreciate you guys. I know some of the things that people might be thinking, okay, coach, you know, you're going through, you, you're going through a, a, a change and during the summer, you guys weren't on, was not on campus. What did you do? How did you stay connected? <laughs> that, that was hard because we hadn't seen our team since March. When we finished, the last practice we had was in, um, in the Thompson Center was around March the first or second, and we were off. Monday was the first day, yesterday was the first day we stepped foot back on the court. 
So it's been almost a half a year. And we had to figure out ways how to stay together. No basketball. But we found some great, unique ways. We found Zoom. All of you probably found Zoom. Zoom have been our lifesaver. Doing Zoom, we have done offensive learning labs, defensive learning labs, defensive concepts, defense, offensive concepts. Um, we have had our Fridays, we have opened it up for guest speakers to come in to talk to the team. Um, we play defensive um, jeopardy, and that was so fun. You know, Coach G had defensive jeopardy working for us, and we got some competitive people when you come down to defensive jeopardy. I mean, but they are shocked, and that means that they were paying attention to everything that we were teaching over the summer, but it was a co competitive moment. We watched movies. One of the movies that we watched that we had to critique was The Hate You Give. Very powerful movie. Very powerful movie. We also just finished up watching Glory Roads. Glory Roads was another powerful movie that was played back there when Texas Western went on to win the national championship. So we have found ways to stay involved and to continue what we are trying to build here. And that's unity, a team with unity. Coming back to campus, we are on campus. What do that look like? Oh, it's tough. It's tough. You can be on campus. These young women had to come. We got players from all over. And so many of them have come back from places that's in a 14 day quarantine. And they've been locked inside their rooms for 14 days. Take my hat off to them. The discipline that they had to show. And majority of them couldn't wait to get out yesterday. They were in the gym at 6 a.m. on their own, sending videos, coach, we out, we back. You know, so it was it was great seeing that, you know, to wake up in the morning at seven and get a video. Um, sent to you that your players are in the gym getting up shots. Just great stuff. How have we handled that? We had to come up with a pod. Um, our trainer, Drea, came up with this pod theory that in order not to cross contaminate, let's go and have one coach to every two players. So we can only be on the court that one coach have to be on the court, one player at a basket and can't have two. So if a coach get infected, then we have another coach that can step up and step in and it won't infect the whole team. So she, that, that have really worked thus far really well. And we appreciate it because yesterday we, we had the coaches out there, you know, coach G out there, she gloved up, she masked up, you know, we, we all covered up out there. We passing and it, it's just a different way. It's a different norm of teaching. At every basket, they have hand wipes. They got sanita um, um, hand sanitizers. They got um, masks over there. They have water, they have a chair. So when they go rest, this is their personal space. And then after, it's two groups. After the first group complete their one hour, we take their ball and we throw it in a bin. And then a new group comes out and they get a new ball. So we're doing everything under COVID to keep our players safe and to also keep our coaches safe. That's the things that we have really done here since we've been back. And it really have helped. But at this time, after speaking about what we're doing, I want to introduce you to some of our newcomers. Okay. On the screen, you might see we have eight players there, but we, we end up losing a young lady at the end, Shania Davis. But down here, Talia Stimson, she's all the way from Idaho, Juco kid from Idaho. 
coming in, had three years left. Um, just great, great, great personality. We can't wait to get her to the floor. Um, you know, she's going to bring a lot of, you know, toughness, excitement, um, and she's a hard worker. We also have Kelsey Ransom from out of New Jersey. I don't want to say this fast because I think you got to earn your stripes. I know Monica and Nock and Crystal, all of them understands that, you know, that you have to earn your stripes. But I think she has the defensive capabilities to be just as good as Deanna White. I think she can fill the stat sheet. She was already known as one of the toughest defensive players in the country, but it's the other things that she can do as well. Um, track star fast is daylight, but she's ambidextrous. She can use both hands, left, right hand effectively well. She can post you as a guard. And then the young lady sitting beside, standing beside her is Jasmine Harmon out of Tennessee. In the build of these guards, got great size on them. Another athlete, get downhill, defends, great help side defensive player, knock down the three ball. We're proud and happy to have her. Then the young lady in the middle, number zero, Yasmin Hart out of Arkansas. One of the quickest little guys you ever want to see, but most competitive. She reminds me, her spirit reminds me a lot of Coach G. I've been around Coach G for over 20 something years. Coach G was a tough, you know, a tough little guy. You know, she's going to come at you and she's going to always continue to work. That's what Yasmin have shown thus far. She's always in the gym. She's always working. All summer long, she would send us videos and just out there getting in work, getting in work. Yesterday, she was almost the last person to leave the gym. And then number zero, out of upstate New York, Tegan Flattery. We were in the gym yesterday and I had her in my shooting station. And I'm telling you, you had to make 10 threes. She was 10 of 11, missed one, 10 of 12, 10 of 11. I mean, just shooting lights out. Great stroke on this kid. We haven't had one of those type of shooters in a long time. Wow, probably since Monica. But you know, but she can stroke it. She can stroke it. The other young lady there, number 23, Jayla Alexander, Jay has to set out. Jay is coming in to us from um, Ole Miss. Um, she was one of the top rookies in the um, Southeastern Conference last year. Uh, we can't wait to get her to the floor the following year. Um, Bonafide score, player of the year down there in the Mississippi area down there. Um, everything was all everything down there. But she brings that toughness, that scoring ability um, to the team that we haven't had in a while. And then the last young lady over there is Taylor Bauer. Taylor is a fifth year and she's from, um, she played at Princeton last year. Um, starting post player at Princeton, team captain. She's going to bring a lot of leadership and toughness. Score the ball, um, very good, 17 feet range and in, low block area, face up, post up, um, rolls both hands very well, but she's a competitor. And it's a young lady that's, on, that's not on this, that is new. She set out last year, Jillian Archer, about 6'2", one of the top players out of California. She transferred in from USC. So she set, freak athlete, top defensive player, score, get to the rim. We're, we're anxious to see this group grow because they are young. If we can get team chemistry with these players, I think the future could be good for us. So we're proud to where we are right now um, through this process. And we're just gonna continue to continue to grind and grind and grind and work and see where the ball falls at the end. Also, we had a new academic advisor this year. Talara Campbell have come on board and Ms. T has been great. 
Miss T was a former basketball player, so she understands what it's all about. She played at Merlin Eastern Shore down there, but you saw her husband. He was, he also works over in business office, but he's also a rapper. He's also, as I was told, a minister, you know? So we come with a lot of blessings. So we want to just say, welcome, Miss T. Thank you for everything that you do for us. But at this time, you've heard enough from me. And I'm going to turn it over to our support club co-president, not Nora Basie Duwani. Thanks, Coach Howard. Thank you so much um, for that. And good evening, everybody. Um, wow, watching that video of the late Coach Thompson and just also the video of Pause for Cause. There's a lot of emotions going on right now, this time. A lot of stuff is heavy on my heart, but I just feel really happy that I have this opportunity to speak to you all and then kind of share this space with you all. So I just want to introduce myself. My name is Nock Nora Duane Basi, nicknamed Nock Nock. Um, I graduated in 2003 uh, coach, uh, under Coach Knapp, and Nikki recruited me out of Indiana. Wilmington, Indiana. Um, my family is originally from South Sudan, but we immigrated to the States in the early 80s um, where I went to high school. And so um, my day job, I'm a technology consultant, security technology, but my passion is I have a show called Listen In, a podcast show called Listen In, where we discuss social issues, particularly um, during these trying times, and we give opportunity for an array of individuals to share their lived experiences. Um, I am married with two kids. I have a nine-year-old and a five-year-old, a nine-year-old girl hoping that she will follow in my footsteps and my family's footsteps and play either college basketball or at least some sport because I think being a student athlete is such a rare opportunity and it's a really great opportunity and feel blessed that I have that opportunity. Um, what, one of the things why I wanted to be a co-president or come back and support and work with, with Georgetown was one of the things that I know, the only reason why I was successful is because of the community that was around me, my family, but then also when the community that I built when I came to Georgetown. And so I wanna give back and I wanna um, show that, that the, particularly to these student athletes that through this pro process of them being at Georgetown, going to school, playing on the hardwood, that they are not alone and that they have these sisters from all different backgrounds and all different um, industries, all different kinds of hearts ready to support them. And so I wanted to help and support and lead that way so that we can bring the alumni back into the program and really lift each other up as we lead. Um, so I'll push to Crystal real quick, let her introduce herself, my co-president, before we get into the Hoya and Power program. But thanks again. Hello, everyone. My name is Crystal Ridgeway. Um, I come from uh, Detroit, Michigan. I graduated from the College of Arts and Sciences in 1991. And um, I think Coach G was a sophomore <laughs> when I left. We played together. Um, I am an entrepreneur and also a flight attendant. And I like to call myself semi-retired. Um, I like having my own time, and I'm very excited about being a part of the Georgetown alumni uh, group that we need to uh, make a stronger uh, showing and uh, presence with the, with the uh, current team. Um, not touched on the common vein that runs between the two of us is that our time in, at Georgetown, we were on teams that were very strong. And we still are. I haven't talked to some of my teammates in years. And when you pick up the phone, you it's like no time has ever passed. That's how strong that bond is. And we want to extend that strong bond to the current athletes who are there through the network of professional women that we are. And we're out in the world doing the great things that we learned at Georgetown. And um, we want to make sure that that network of strength is available to our current players so they can continue and 
uh, to get back as well. Um, that's about it. So Nap is going to tell you about the Players and Power program. Thanks, Crystal. So as you guys saw, like my sister, my daughter's coming in here demanding something. So sorry about that, but at least I remembered to put myself on mute. Um, so about the Hoya program, um, Empowerment Program, um, first we wanna thank Coach Howard and Nikki and um, the whole Georgetown staff for kind of supporting us and kind of guiding us on how to make this program really feel like fit the current student athletes because we're doing this for you all and we wanna make sure that what we're doing is in line with what you want. So um, the Georgetown Women's Basketball Hoya and Power Program is committed to facilitating and providing opportunities for reflection, self-examination, supporting and guiding career development and aspirations while teaching practical leadership skills through shared experiences with members of the women's basketball community. So the ultimate goal of the program is to help the student athletes strengthen their self-confidence, find their voice, learn to wield their influence and leadership and assist in developing socially conscious global leaders for the future. I mean, already from the programs that the, these women are doing, uh, <laughs> they're actually leading the way and a really inspiration for many of us already. Um, the Hoi Power Program will strive to build a culture of character by matching current student athletes with alumni that have similar interests, passions, goals, and career ambitions. Our goal is to support and inspire our Hoya sisters as they navigate their four years on the court, in the classroom, and in the community. The sisterhood and camaraderie developed while competing on the hardwood and in the, in the classroom will serve as a commonality between the ladies resulting in a strong connection and appreciation for our Hoya family as well as our experiences. So, um, my ask, so with that program, with the, with, we want to kind of blow up the whole kind of mentorship program. When we talk about mentorship, we're, we're talking about sponsorship. So there's three asks, particularly that I request from our alumni. So number one is take part in the survey that we plan to shoot out within the next two days so we can pair you accordingly to the student athlete. Um, number two is if you commit, we want you to sign a pledge to be part of this whole Hoya Empower program. Because once we get it, once we do that, then we will also be supporting you and facilitating the guidelines that come with that program. And number three, we want you to commit to your student athletes by providing tangible support. And this is what I mean in terms of going, you know, blowing up the whole mentorship, disrupting the mentorship program and calling it a sponsorship. So if I have a student athlete and this student athlete is looking for um, a job or support, some of the tangible things that I can do, right, is resume support, mock interview support, doing true introductions to people in my field. If, it, if it's not in my technology field, making sure that I can be that liaison or support to, to push in that in the right direction. And if it doesn't even have to do with career development, right? In this time right now, there's a lot going on. A lot of things are very heavy. And just being, you know, finding somebody outside of your network that you can connect with and build a relationship with that perhaps has a little bit more experience, we hope to be that as well. Be that older sister, to be that support. Um, we know right now the way you, the way you guys are handling this certain situation with corona, with the coronavirus is so it, it's so inspiring to some of the young ladies that I have spoken to. I don't know if I could have handled it as well as many of you are doing. So we commend you for that. And we commend you for being inspiration to so many. So as this program kicks off, we really encourage our alumni to get involved and do that survey, work with us so we can support these ladies. Because one of the important things, like we said, is as we are rising, we wanna bring our student athletes with us. We wanna build this community of Georgetown women's basketball so that when we, when we move anywhere or when the girls move anywhere, they know that they have the sisterhood behind them. Um, I wanna pass back to Crystal so that, um, so she can you know, say anything else that I might've left out. But just know that me and Crystal, anything you need, reach out to us as we're building this program because we're trying to build it right for you. Um, 
Nak, you've said a mouthful. Uh, the only thing that we need uh, help with and that I would love to impress upon everyone who is on this Zoom call is that if you know of any alumni who uh, we can get in touch with, provide us their, give them our information so we can tap into them, so we can continue to support them. Um, just because we graduate from Georgetown, it doesn't mean that we don't need each other's nurturing support. We have a common bond that runs through all of us through the rest of our lives, no matter what happens. I was so jealous. I had to go buy my own Hoya sweatshirt. <laughs> I was like, I'm wearing my sweatshirt. <laughs> but it's because I still be, bleed blue. Um, and we need for everyone to assist us in reaching all of the other alum. Um, we want this program to be a way for us to gather everyone together from we don't care how long ago. There is something that we need. There's something we can lend. And this community is, is super powerful. Um, and that is our superpower is one another. So we thank you in advance for your support and we look forward to great, great things. Um, I'll be in the DC area and I'll wear my mask and I've been COVID tested and all that other good stuff in prep, but I'm looking forward to uh, being around. Yes. Now, I, just, I just wanna add, we wanna thank Sharon as well for her support in yeah. helping us shape this, this program and Sarah and Kara as well. Um, so, so lastly, we will get you the link if it, um, and we'll try to post it here, but we will, but Kara will be sending an email, follow-up email um, after this program and we will ensure that you will get that link so that you can sign up um, so we can begin pairing you with our student athletes. And so thank you, please join us. It's gonna be an awesome ride. Um, we wanna get to know each other across the years. And this has been a really great opportunity for me to also know Crystal and working together. And so we just wanna expand that to everybody else. So thank you. Click that link, give us your information and we'll get moving. Thanks. Thank you. That was fantastic ladies. The program sounds tremendous. I do have this question though, Nock. Is it a pairing for life or is there a timeline on it or how does that go? That's a great question. So as we start, what we want to do is like pair for the year for the school year and then like re reshift it every summer, right? But the intent is that you guys build your relationships, that these pairings, we build relationships. So even if I'm paired with somebody next year, you just continually build more networks and relationships, right? But not, but the pairing for that year is now myself, if I have a student athlete that I'm committed to reaching out to her, her and supporting her and finding out what's going on. So yeah, thanks for that question. All right, I love that. And as you all can see, there is the link in the survey that Sarah just popped in. And then, hey, Bill, how are you, my friend? Uh, you've certainly been a big brother to me in the media space, but can Bill be a big brother or not? I mean, I don't see why not, because we're talking about community, right? We're talking about community. Um, we're building this community, Georgetown. So yes, Bill. Hit that link, put your information in there. And, and also just to point out that um, we as mentors or the people, the alumni, we call on each other. So we need as many people to be as many resources for each other as well as for the team. So this is not exclusive to women, <laughs> women's basketball alum. It's to all of us in this community because we can't do it by ourselves. Uh, it is so fitting that Bill would chime in in the chat. Literal example, we met while I was playing ball at Georgetown, have stayed in touch since, still connects me to different folks at different points in the media. It does not, <coughs> excuse me, it does not stop for sure. So thank you, Crystal and Nock. We're all excited about that. Uh, remember, if you have questions, comments, concerns, positive energy, I see um, Zakira popping in the chat, uh, Peggy was in the chat earlier, feel free to drop those comments, questions, concerns in the chat. We do have a few scripted questions for 
Um, I guess we'll turn these two back to Knock, Crystal, and myself. Even Coach G can get in the mix if she wanted to on this one. Uh, one of the first questions is taking a brief trip down memory lane, nothing too crazy, but something that stands out from our days at the Hilltop. And I know for myself, it is definitely our Sweet 16 run in 2011, particularly beating the University of Maryland at the University of Maryland to go to the Sweet 16 and play in Philadelphia. That's always top of mind when I think of an actual event. But of course, the sisterhood, the family, the laughs, the jokes, the highs and lows, all the things that you learn during your four years at the Hilltop. Crystal, what about you? Um, I think my most fond memories are of uh, playing, and Nikki can attest to this. I believe we had um, a play called Double Fist, where when there were guards, <laughs> There were, whenever Nikki or any of our points got harassed, they would call us out to the top of the key, and it was our job to set that screen to take care of them. And they had a little bit extra, they had one or two more inches for the rest of the game because they were always looking to see if that was double zero coming out and taking care of it. I remember Amy Granville, she taught me how to set those screens. So it was it was a wonderful experience, and I love I love my team, and I love the things that we did together. And um, there's no substitute. Peggy, you set those screens as well. <laughs> Absolutely. I still have back problems to this day because of you both. <laughs> uh, Peggy, since you're jumping in, would you like to share a memory? I love that you pointed out that Coach G owns. No, I mean I, I bring this up all the time, and it embarrasses Nikki because she is now a mentor versus a player, but she owned UConn when we beat them. I mean, when I say physically, the stuff that she did was unbelievable. Like it was, you know, <laughs> she's going like this, but it was, um, she's a lovely, wonderful, respectful person. But when she's on the court, she, she, she owns it. And that was, that was a great, great um, season for us. We uh, played against, we were in the same conference as Miami that year. They were ranked number four. There was, there was, I mean, the Big East was crazy that year and um, what a year it was. Um, I would like to say, however, just going back to the mentorship thing, because um, I know there's a lot of pl current players on here. Here's what I'd say is that, um, because I mentor a lot of people, including family members and it's about what you do, not just what we do. So you have to approach taking on a mentorship or wanting a job or people to introduce you as if um, you're approaching a big game, like it's that important. And so you need to take feedback really well. You need to follow up. You need to be aggressive with how you um, approach people. I mean, I have, I have a niece who would get back to me three days later and I'm kind of like, why am I helping you? Because if you were interviewing for a job right now, I wouldn't even call you back. So th this is kind of um, straight talk, tough love, but you need to know that, that if people are going to help you in this community, it's not a given. You have to approach it because you want it. So um, that's the one thing I was thinking when um, you guys were talking that you really need to um, if you want it, it's not just a given. And I know you guys have it in you because you show up every day and work your butts off and um, you have it in you, but just know that, that a lot of people will not um, respond if you don't take things as seriously as they take it. That's so. a great point, Peggy. Do not be the mentee that wasted my time. Don't nobody yeah. have time for that at all. Knock, did you want to chime in with the memory? That's a, such an important point, Peggy. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so mine is not on the court, but you know, I think it was our my junior year and September 11th happened. I usually say this memory, but it was like, it had a big impact on, I think, me and a lot of my teammates, Zakir is on here. And I felt like it really brought us closer together it was that moment when it was like okay there's so much more to you know to life than to just what's happening to me in this emo this moment of maybe what stress with basketball stress with school whatever it is relationships at school but it was like this sisterhood these are my sisters um we you know 
family members have been affected by 9-11. So many people lost their lives. And it was like that pause in that moment for that season for us. And then they, they put the, the, they started, that's when they started putting the American flags on our jerseys. And it was just a really a pause moment to say, hey, like these are my people and, and we got to love each other regardless what happens. So um, there was a lot of growth in that year, I think for, for many of us. And we still have those strong bonds because of that experience together. That's a great point, Knock. Um, Crystal, I want you to come off of mute and read the comment that you just dropped in the chat. Come on with this good word this evening. Um, it, I love y'all so much, <laughs> but I, I just wrote, um, what you learn on the court is the approach you take in life. Um, you're here, we are here to help push and support, but we cannot pull you to success. We love you all and can't wait to give, you, give our best to you. Well said, well said. We've gotten lots of good nuggets to hold on to from some of our alums. I want to go back to Coach Howard. Uh, Coach, you talked openly about the challenges of COVID-19, but we are all thrilled to hear that as a team, you guys were able to find ways to connect and stay connected. But are there any updates that you can share on the upcoming season or, or what that may look like? Yeah, just a little bit. Um, I, I think because of COVID, we had to change um, schedules. It's games we had to drop. Um, a lot of states uh, under that risk um, area and knowing DC sets alone and they have 14 day quarantine. So it's things that we had to just back out of our tournament that we were possibly going to down in Myrtle Beach um, and try to stay more local. And um, we were able to pick up this um, a couple of local games until we sign the contract. Um, I, I don't want to disclose that just yet, but we'll try to stay local and play some local teams to add. Um, NCAA now have you maximum games of 25 you can play. Um, we would be perfect right now. We have those five games that we are looking for and knowing that the Big East now with UConn back, you're going to get um, 20 games um, there. So our schedule will be complete, uh, Monica. And um, it'll be, you know, as always, you're playing in the Big East Conference. You, you don't even need non-conference. You, 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 got, you, you got a power conference in itself. Um, right now, there's no conversation that people keep saying power five, power five. There is no power five without UConn. If you're in UConn conference, you power five. <laughs> because championships are won in the Big East Conference, and that's up and down the board. Uh, people got to realize that, you know, on the men's side, we win national championships. On the women's side, we win national championships. I just said on a call yesterday to honor our men's soccer team, Big East champions, national champions. You know, we win national championships in the Big East Conference. And... You know, so when you hear people say those things, but I think our schedule is going to play itself out, Monica, and I think, you know, we're going to be able to um, enjoy, you know, this type of year because it's a different norm. We are all certainly adjusting, but one thing we know as athletes is that it is not necessarily uh, just in what happens. The power is sort of in how you respond. And so we are pliable, flexible, and doing our best to navigate. We did get a question coach submitted from Patrick Waring who asks, Coach Howard, thank you for taking time to do this for the Georgetown community. I wanted to ask if you could talk about how important it has been for you and the team to use your voices and your platform to talk about social justice and the need for everyone to make sure that they are registered to vote. And I know you mentioned November 3rd, you guys will shut things down to vote, but I'm sure coach, that's probably been a learning experience for you at, in a position of leadership in such unprecedented times. Yes, um, it's Patrick, thank you for that question too. Um, this has been hard. It, it, it's been really hard on all of us, um, our players, our coaches. Um, you're faced with one thing with COVID and then all of a sudden you're hit with everything that was going on with social justice in the United States. And you have to hear your players when they say, coach, what are we going to do? We had to take a step back. 
we had to take a step back as parents and they had to take a step as student athletes. But as a parent and having two sons and having those discussions of what we were seeing and it, it hit home because it's put your hands on the steering wheel. Don't give them any calls. Don't move this way, don't do that. It hit home. So when we took that stance as a team, we decided that we were gonna to stand together, that we were gonna let our voices be heard, but the difference is we can't just stop there. We can't let our voices be heard because the only way to make change is through vote. There can be no change. We can march, we can talk, but if there is not the vote, change is not gonna come through word alone. So we stood for everything we believed in but we as a team also came up with our culture word. And our culture word this year was acts. And when we talk about acts, it's exactly what we're living in right now. If there is gonna be change, we talk about acts and the A is for accountability. Will each and every one of you be accountable to do the right thing as we continue to live our lives. The C was for commitment. Will you commit to doing the right things and helping us change those narratives in the way people live and the way people are treated? The T was for trust. Can we trust you to do all the things that you say you would do? And the S was for sacrifice. Will you sacrifice all the things that you once heard for the good of society? That's how we have taken our platform. That's who we are. And that's what we stand for. Love that, such a powerful acronym. Okay, coach, as we uh, prepare to wind this thing down, we certainly want to be mindful of everybody's time and you should be monitoring your Zoom time, people. Don't sit in front of the screen all day, every day, as best you can. Um, we do want to hear from you, coach, in terms of how we as alums, as fans, as, as supporters, as members of this Georgetown community can support the priorities, um, both on the basketball front and the holistic priorities of this season. I would just continue to tell each and every one of you, I know we're in hard times right now with the economy, but anything that you can give, continue to please give and your annual support, you know, to the women's basketball, you know, uh, team, that would be great. One of the initiatives that we do have as well is to try to put a video board in McDonough. We wanna be able to lift McDonough back up pick it back up, putting a video board, going in there and one day, you know, gutting out those bleachers and putting some seat backs in there, putting a new paint job on there. It's the best facility for women's basketball and volleyball. You don't have to have a 17,000 seat arena. It's the, the things right there because we're not selling out 17,000. But as the Mystics have done, you bring it down to four to 5,000, a good 2,000 seats in there to 3,000 is perfect because it gives you the atmosphere. But we need your help. We need your help to change McDonough look and give it a different face look and give us all the opportunity to come back and look and say, wow, this is beautiful. So we're gonna need your help there. The other way through our department holistic priorities, we have things that we are working with diversity and equity and inclusion. We need your help there. So every little bit helps enhancing our educational programming, ensuring talent 
it will acquisition of retention and foster our outreach service programs. And then it's our athletic counseling services. Add additional full-time positions there. Contract the university co-ops and work with them by adding new resources. And then it's the athletic academic service. I talked about Ms. T, but it's Ms. T and one other. We need to continue to add academic advisors because Georgetown have 29 sports. We need this. And then enhance our tutoring program to give every student athlete an opportunity to get the best help they possibly can get. And lastly, our student athletes with nutrition. Big universities have these unlimited access to fueling stations. Our players are up some mornings at 6 a.m. and they go to 9 and 10 o'clock at night. But what a great way if we can continue to fuel them with unlimited access. But eating right, that's how you can help support this program. Thank you for that, Coach. A lot of different ways for us as alum and supporters to look and see where we can get involved. Uh, with that, if there are no more questions inserted into the chat, I believe that is going to do it for this evening's Coaches Corner series discussion. Coach Howard, Knock, Crystal, um, Peggy, Grayson, uh, the current players, other former alums, I know I'm missing names and such. My friend Bill, thank you all for this time this evening. Knock just dropped the link. Uh, for the mentorship form in the chat. If you guys want to quickly copy and paste that elsewhere so that you don't lose it when we close this chat. Um, I'm sure we'll work on some sort of email collective. Thank you all for your time this evening. Please stay safe. Be mindful of, you know, this, we're not through clear on this virus thing just yet. Stay safe. We thank you all for your support and your time tonight. Have a wonderful evening. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Great job. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, coaches. Take care.